qualities. When the soul is uh, emanation from Krishna, and Krishna has no defect. So when we approach Krishna, then uh, we reach real satisfaction, real bliss, real happiness, real peace. <clears throat> so, this would be a good time for questions. Pass the mic back to Uddhava, please. I have a question about Krishna's flu. Uh-huh. Hey, Krishna? Okay. Um, at what age did Krishna start playing the flute? Oh, boy. <laughs> and who gave the flute, or how was it? Well, in Vrindavan, the cowherd boys all played flute. That's the culture there. And they use the flute, actually, as like a signaling device. When you're out in the forest, there's a, a, a special little flute called Murli. Uh, Murli. And this flute is used for like signaling the cows and the other cowherd boys, you know, how you're going to uh, herd the cows or where you're going to. I mean, they have all kinds of codes that they use, you know, like that. So, uh, although it's not mentioned as far as I know in any scripture, uh, who gave Krishna his flute? You know, that's like, you know, who gave the cow his moo? I mean, <laughs> Krishna and his flute are like, you know, they go together. They're part of each other. So uh, probably, you know, at a very young age, he began playing flute. You know, just a baby. But there's no mention in the scriptures of when. You know, when did Krishna start playing the flute? Well, when did the sky become blue, you know? <laughs> Remember, Krishna's transcendental form always has complete potencies. So just like um, there's a description that when, when Krishna began the rasa dance with the gopis, they were only six or seven years old, right? But Krishna had full potency in that form to manifest all of the pastimes of conjugal love with the gopis. So, you know, even at, in his baby form, if he really wanted to, he could pick up the flute and play it. There's, there's nothing to stop him. Any other questions? Question from Santiago de Vodis. Please accept my humble obeisances, Babaji. Mm -hmm. What does it mean that Gargama is said to be inconceivable to human beings? What does it mean? It means that you can't understand it. <laughs> we were, the other day we were talking about Lord Chaitanya and these four qualities that are only in Krishna. We notice that Lord Chaitanya has three of them. Uh, like he has very special pastimes. Yeah. And like because that. Lord, Ch Lord Chaitanya is Radha and Krishna combined. So he actually has not only the pastimes of Krishna, but also the pastimes of Radha or qualities. But still, the way we were discussing that, uh, even for Lord Chaitanya, Krishna is higher or the center of, the, of all the activities. Because everything that Lord Chaitanya does, does is for Krishna. Mm -hmm. So in this way, there was this discussion about who is the Supreme, and like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we concluded. Question from Tiago. 
Please accept my humble obeisances, Babaji. Is it possible to be in a mixed state of advancement of devotional service, even not being in anartanivritti? Is it possible to feel attraction for Krishna and do spontaneous service? Well, yes, but you won't be steady. See, the, right after anartanivritti, the next stage is nishta, which means steadiness. When all of the anarthas are gone from the heart, then one's service becomes steady, doesn't fall down, or doesn't stop or reduce the service. Until that time, there, there are going to be moments when you feel wonderful, spontaneous attraction to Krishna, and then there are going to be other moments when you become discouraged and fall down because of different anarthas. Huh? So, uh, anartha nivritti means that the stage of raganuga or spontaneous devotional service has begun and doesn't have to stop. So, because devotional service is eternal. Until we attain steadiness, if, our, if we're sometimes engaged in devotional service and sometimes not, if we're sometimes thinking of Krishna with love and sometimes not, if we uh, keep having to go back to the stage of regulated devotional service because we can't maintain spontaneous love, that means we have not yet attained anartanapriti. Of course, you're going to have good days and bad days, like anybody. But after anartanavritti, your bad days never go be, you know, down beyond a certain point. They never go, you know, down into an arthas. You know, a, a really advanced devotee, even on a bad day, they still don't indulge in an arthas. Uh, that means they're uh, on the platform of steadiness. And when a devotee becomes really, really steady, I mean, like Srila Prabhupada, he was like a rock. He was so steady. You could rely on him. You could count on him. He was always going to be there and always engaged very nicely in Krishna's service with great enthusiasm and determination. Uh, so this is nishta. I keep losing the mouse? Oh. Um, We have to look deep into our hearts and see what is really our desire. Do we really want to serve Krishna or are we trying to use devotional service to please ourselves? See, In the beginning, it's like we try, we're trying to solve our own problems by engaging in devotional service. This is the uh, neophyte stage. But as we become more advanced in devotional service, then we start to become more oriented towards pleasing Krishna than pleasing ourselves. One reason is that we discover that when we please Krishna, Krishna automatically pleases us, and so we don't have to endeavor separately for our own pleasure. And another is that the taste, we start to acquire a taste for purity. And, and this taste is so nice that it gives a certain kind of pleasure all by itself. Like Srila Prabhupada always used to say, uh, pl uh, purity is its own reward. Uh, in other words, there's a, a kind of taste that we get from purity that makes it unnecessary for, uh, to indulge in other kinds of enjoyment. Because the purity itself is its own reward. Uh, you, you have to taste this to understand it. Uh, we're so conditioned to the mode of passion and you know, chasing after material pleasure that we don't understand that the mode of goodness gives us pleasure automatically. Uh, so when we perform our, our spiritual duties and we cultivate this mode of goodness, which means no sinful activities, then we automatically get a reciprocation from Krishna. That's how it begins. 
And then when we reach the transcendental stage, it becomes very intense, very wonderful. This is hard to imagine for a person in conditioned consciousness because there's direct contact between our consciousness and Krishna's consciousness. In fact, this is what Krishna consciousness is. It's a direct contact between the soul and the Lord within the heart. Well, this is very profoundly satisfying. And then we find we don't need all these other material attachments and material enjoyments that we automatically enjoy just by being in Krishna's presence. And this is the real thing. Another question? There's another one a little bit unrelated. Let's try it. Question from Prasad. Dear Baba, 